Win's first open source model is a CUDA kernel programmer, a GPU programmer, and this open source model, which is a fine tune of 32 billion parameter model, beats O3. OpenAI's flagship model is beaten by a 32 billion parameter fine tuned model. And it's very interesting. They have done a bunch of nuanced fine tuning things. And in this video, we're going to see every detail about this model. This model is called Kevin. I mean, I mean, it's it's kernel plus Devin. So it's called Kevin. I don't know why did they come up with this name. They've used something called multi-turn reinforcement learning for fine tuning this model. And also there's a very interesting aspect of how when you're doing the fine tuning, with chain of thought, there is an exploding context window problem and they've managed to handle it. But before we get ahead of ourselves, what is this particular model? So this model is a GPU kernel programmer. So if you are using NVIDIA GPU CUDAs, so you need somebody who understands kernel programming or CUDA programming to actually write GPU kernels that will do certain things for you. So this is just like a Python programmer, you have to create a kernel programmer which is kind of a niche skill in itself. Not a lot of programmers in this world who can do GPU programming. Now, what they figured out is that there are a lot of these companies that are trying to do kernel programming with inference time scaling alone, but that doesn't help when your model does not have the knowledge. So the knowledge of kernel programming. So what they've done is they've taken this benchmark called kernel bench. This is a benchmark that was released by Stanford University. So kernel bench can LLMs write GPU kernels. That's a benchmark. So they've taken this benchmark. This is about 250 questions, I guess. So 250 PyTorch based classical deep learning task. So this is to evaluate if the models can write optimized CUDA kernels. So they've taken that 250 question out of that. They've taken 180 task on the level two for training the model and uh, with the 20 task with holdout data set. So see, uh, like uh, this entire thing is impressive, but there is one thing that kind of, you know, makes me think salty is that they have trained a model literally using kernel bench data set to evaluate on kernel bench data set. Now you might argue that they've trained using 180 task and the 20 tasks are holdout data set, which is literally what we do machine learning, like classical machine learning. If you see any Kaggle competition, so you have the training data set, you've got the test data set, and then you use the training data set to train and then test data set to evaluate the model. It is almost same kind of stuff. But when you say that this is what has happened with reinforcement learning, somehow this poor human brain that I've got doesn't comprehend as a something great. Maybe, maybe, you know, like um, I've got it wrong, but let me know your thoughts on this particular point. I would love to hear, you know, some intriguing thoughts on this, but leaving that confusion or, you know, my, my perspective aside, if you see, this is a very good model and uh, the model does certain things really well. So one is what they call as multi-turn training method. So what they've done is they've taken the model through an iterative feedback loop. And they're saying that this iterative food feedback loop is what makes somebody a good programmer. So we don't just go to point B, which is a solution from point A, rather we go from A to A1 to A2 to A2, A3, A4, A5, and then finally arrive at the final solution, which is B. And the same thing that they're doing, they start with the initial prompt that generates, uh, that has got the COD chain of thought, that generates the kernel, and then they evaluate it, they see if it is working fine, that evaluation information just goes back again, like eval info, and then they finally uh, do the retraining again. So this is the multi-turn reinforcement learning using GRPO, which they have done. But now this particular thing, as interesting as it sounds, it produces two different problems. One, it produces something called exploding context window. I mean, obviously I've got models um, which can handle uh, something up to 100,000 tokens, right? But after 100,000 tokens, what would you do? Like you can't, you can't like keep on feeding it. So you need some kind of solution. The second thing is, when you give a score, so they've given one score, one successful reward. So reinforcement learning is all about rewards. They've given a single reward to the entire trajectory and defined as the maximum score achieved by any kernel and use this for sequence train, use this sequence for training. So there is only one score and the maximum score achieved by any kernel is being used for the reward training. Now that is also posing a problem because now you do not know in which particular step or the kernel, this score was generated. So it doesn't have that particular knowledge to make sure that that is the kernel that it should be optimizing it for. So this, these two problems were handled by very simple answers, to be honest. One, first of all, they've removed the chain of thought for inference. So whenever the chain of thought becomes really long, they have removed the chain of thought, added just a summary of it. 
So this helped them retain the context, but not the entire chain of thought. So this is very, I mean, very interesting. Like, I mean, like quite naive solution, but very interesting. The second thing is they have uh, used a new reward that is called discounted sum of scores. So you can read more about it, but it is like a Markov decision process. Uh, ideally, what they have tried to do is each refinement step uh, to make it like a training on its own training sample. So they've made it like a score which is dependent on the previous score. So it's a, it's a very much like Markov uh, chain decision process. I mean, if you take a weather example, tomorrow's weather is going to be based on today's weather. It's kind of like that. They've used a new uh, reward function. So these are the two uh, so, uh, workarounds that they did. And the result is quite impressive. And if you see the average score, Kevin has scored, th Kevin 32 billion parameter model has scored 65%. And uh, there is a very big twist. We left to tell you soon. So this has scored 65% and O3, which is OpenAI's flagship model has scored only 35%. And even O4 mini has scored 36%. Now, if you see QWQ, which is a Quen's, uh, a thinking model from uh, the Chinese company Quen, and that model, 32 billion parameter model has scored 23%. It's not an instruct model, it's just a base model. Now, what's very interesting here is that this Kevin here, the 32 billion parameter model is just a model that is a fine tuned version of Quen, 32 billion parameter model. So they've literally taken Quen, 32 billion parameter model, and uh, that's, I, I don't know, they should have called Kevin with Q. So this is based on Quen, the 32 billion parameter model. The model is available as a, you know, Hugging Faces model uh, on a Hugging Faces model up. This is available. You can just go ahead and then start using it. It's very interesting that they can take an existing model that is like as good as Quen, the Chinese model, and then fine tune it just using some innovative new step. And then that will give double, almost like double the performance of what OC can do, which is a proprietary model from OpenAI that requires like a lot of compute for you to run. In fact, the the thing here is that it is not just that this model is really good, but this model also does not require a lot of compute for you to run. So there are a lot of different model comparison between like different evil set and across all these uh, different comparisons, you would see that this model does a pretty good job. So for example, if you compare Kevin 32 billion parameter model over QWQ, which is like Quinn's own thinking model, the 32 billion parameter model, and also the single uh, t t turn model, not the multi-turn model. So there are like three different models. One is the single turn model, the Kevin's 32 billion multi-turn model, and uh, the third one is the QWQ. So you can see one, first of all, single turn training has given some boost. But what has given the maximum boost is the multi-turn training. And that is, I think, something that a lot of people are going to do. There are a lot of different experimentations that they're still doing. But there is a very, very interesting aspect uh, of this entire thing. So what they figured out is that when the chain of thought responses are generated, okay, so there is, okay, I said, okay, uh -huh, because this is about okay. So there is a very interesting thing. If the chain of thought does not start with okay, then this is mostly junk, okay? So they're calling it non-okay ratio. So if the chain of thought starts with okay, so then it is good. But if the chain of thought, that is a strong predictor for the future junk. So if it does not start with okay, then it is not okay. So that is like a junk. So as you can see here, it starts generating a lot of non-okay somewhere like after this long 35 to 40 steps. That means it starts creating a lot of instability and also repetitiveness, nonsensical responses, just pure junk. But what you see is also like things like this. Okay, amigos, I, so the model, the model uh, says, so I need to optimize this 3D tensor matrix multiplication. Oh, okay. Holy crap. I need to get the, uh, I need to get this code optimized at the eighth pass, like uh, of the refinement step more. Okay, sh this is getting frustrated. Let me see the error is about. So the model is like, it's, it's, it's weird, like the kind of things that it generates. I mean, I don't know if this is how normal programmers, uh, GPU kernel programmers were doing it, but main thing here is that, okay, the model has deviated into a region of instability. So when you do reinforcement learning, one of the ways you handle, like one of the things that you want the reinforcement learning to do is take the model away from the existing distribution, which is being managed by the KL coefficient, the divergence. And they have also played with that. And then the finally, they kind of like uh, uh, struck a balance. So it's very interesting that, you know, one model, which is an open source model that can be taken, fine tuned with new innovative techniques. And also you can add more inference time, test time scaling. 
and then finally that model will outperform as good as like something like OpenAI's O3 model on a niche task like kernel programming. It's very interesting, very surprising. The model is already available on Hugging Faces model up. Strongly encourage you to spend a rest of your five to 10 minutes going through this blog post, single word by word, and also exploring the data set and model if you are interested in kernel programming. Let me know what you think about it. I'm also very surprised that Devin, which is a very close partner of OpenAI, has done something like this. So uh, I don't know what other American companies are trying to take Chinese models and innovate on top of it without letting us know. See you in another video. Happy prompting.